This video is going to take a look at the optional class which has been introduced with Java 8. First, we're going to take a look at the problem which the optional class resolves, and this is all around the null pointer exception. Second, we're going to take a look at some of the methods that are available to us with the optional class, which involve checking our object to be null or whether it is available. And then lastly, we're going to look at how the optional class allows us to dynamically and also statically assign a value to an object in the case that it is null. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more weekly videos on Java, do consider subscribing. So I have an example here that illustrates the problem that we're trying to resolve with the optional class. So we have a double value called my double, and using this random double method down below, it will return the value, which is random, if it is even, otherwise it will return the null value. And then later in the application, we're going to check if that value is not equal to null, and then we will do something with that number. So the optional class here is trying to resolve this problem of constantly checking if my double is not equal to null. If my double is used at multiple places within the application, we can perform this check multiple times, resulting in a lot of repeated code. The optional class will also improve the readability of our application, as it clarifies the intent of our object. At the moment, all we see is a double. However, if we understand how the optional class works and we transform this into an optional of a double, when this object is later used within the application, we can understand that sometimes it may be null. And this will help further prevent the opportunity of a null pointer exception from arising within our application. We can create an optional by writing the optional class and then passing in the type of object that we expect our optional to be within braces. So let's say we want to define an optional that is of type integer. And then we can assign this optional value by using the optional.off method and then passing in the value that we would like to have. We can also create optionals for primitive types such as a double or an int and this is written in a similar way. So for the optional double we have optional double dot off and then for the optional int we have optional int dot off. Now I can print these three into the console so we can see what an optional looks like. So we can see within the console we have optional followed by the value that we've passed in within squared brackets. And that's the same for the optional double and the optional int. So within the optional class, if we don't have a value present, we would have the optional of empty returned back to us. So as we can see down below, if we have no value, we would return an optional.empty and into the console we can see optional.empty printed. Next, we're going to take a look at what would happen if we try to assign a null value into an optional. So we can see down below that we have a null pointer exception from line 22 of our application, which is where we try to assign null into this optional. So when we're creating an optional, and we may expect the value that which we're assigning to our optional to be null, we would want to use the optional of nullable method when assigning on the right hand side. So by using optional.offNullable and then assigning null within the optional, we will be creating an optional.empty instance that we can later use. So we can see it printed down below. So far, we've looked at the different ways that we can create an instance of an optional. Now we're going to take a look at the API and the methods that come with the optional class and how we can now inspect upon the optional that we have to check if our value exists and how we can extract that value out of the optional. So if we use the optional null one that we've just created, we can see a Boolean method down below called isPresent, and that will check if our optional is optional.empty or if it is an actual value. So if I duplicate optional null one and create optional null two, which has a value within it, we can now print out and see this Boolean, how it would correspond to an optional of null, 
and an optional of 10. So we can see down below that optional 1 is present returns false, whereas optional 2 dot is present returns true. And this would be a check that we perform on our optional to see if the value exists. A little bit further up in our console when we've been printing out some of the optional integers that we have from earlier on, we can see that what is printed is the optional followed by the value within the squared brackets. So if we know that our optional value is present, we can now obtain and extract that value by using the dot get method on our optional. And we can see that by performing dot get on our optional null2, we extract the value 10 into the console. If we try to perform dot get on an optional that has a empty value. So we can see a no such element exception has been thrown into our console when we try to perform dot get on our optional null one value. So using the dot is present method from the optional is a nice readable way for us to ensure that the optional that we have contains an actual value and that we're not going to then try to perform any operations on a value that would otherwise be null. One final and really useful feature of the optional class is that it allows us to assign default values whenever we create an optional object. So this can be really useful for assigning values that would otherwise be null into some kind of default or blank object that you would otherwise be happy to perform upon. So I've defined this optional of a string called name and I've called this getName method that will return an optional of Rodrigo. Now, if this optional were empty, we can assign a default value by using the or else method. And as a result of our default value, our name no longer returns an optional of a string, but it will return just a string. So we can see that Rodrigo has been returned to the name. However, if this was an empty optional, it would otherwise return Bamford. An alternative way of assigning a default value would be by using the or else get method, which also comes from the optional class. From or else get, we can see that a supplier is now passed into the method arguments and therefore an operation can now be performed to obtain the default value rather than statically assigning the value as we have done on the line above. So we can now see that Bamford and Phillips has now been returned as a result of the default values for name and name2 that we have assigned. So your next question might be, so what's the real difference between or else and or else get? Okay, so, so or else is assigning a static value for Bamford and or else get is calling a supplier to return Phillips. But a key difference between these two methods is that or else get will only ever be called if optional.empty is returned from our optional. On the other hand, when we call or else, this method will always be called regardless of whether this has returned an optional of empty or an optional with a value. So if we have any logic or any processing to be done in this block here, it would be called every time that we process the get name. However, for name two, the or else get part of the method call would only ever be called if we have an optional of empty. So I can demonstrate this just by creating another method. So what we will see is that the optional.empty is being returned from the get name method 
and as a result both the get Bamford method will be called and this modified lambda expression where we're getting Phillips will also be printed into the console. So we can see these default methods being called firstly for Bamford and second for Phillips and we can see the default values being assigned to name and name2 as they're printed down below. Now if I change the optional that is returned from the original getName method we should now realize that the or else method is still being called so we will still expect getting Bamford to be recorded into our console however the second method of getting Phillips from the or else get method is not going to be called as we have a value already returned from the get name method call. So in the console we can see that Rodrigo has been printed for both name and name2 however the default method for name has already called the or else method of getting Bamford whereas for name2 where we're using or else get that second method call is never going to be made because we already have a value from get name. So this video summarizes how you can use the optional class to firstly check for null pointers within your application, how you can handle optionals as they're empty values, how we can assign null values into an optional, and also two of the really great ways of assigning default values to your object for instances when you may expect to otherwise return null.